The losing streak continues. We'll talk about it on this episode of Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yeah, we're here. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for over a decade. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, we're just going to cut right to the chase on this one um, because we've been absent for a few days. Um, I will just rather not get into it but there was some family stuff that went on over the past few days so you know that's what's been going on here so we're going to just do a quick little review of the past few days because it has been miserable to say the least and also it was the easter holiday so you know had time with family and by the way hopefully you all had a safe and happy easter weekend as well all right so we got to talk about special teams first off I know there's a lot to unpack over the last few days of Ducks hockey, and those are all going to come on future podcasts when I'm a little bit more composed, have a little bit more time to gather my thoughts. But I do want to talk about the special teams first on this particular podcast because they've been awful. They've been absolutely awful the last few games, especially a game recently against the Seattle Kraken where they allowed, you ready, 10, 10 power play opportunities to the Seattle Kraken, a team that is fighting for a playoff spot right now. I know the Kraken, they're still like a ways out, but they're not mathematically out of it. And they still could somehow make the playoffs if they keep winning. And the Kings continue to choke away their lead, which they are doing, by the way. The Kings are choking away that lead. And I'll talk about the Kings on another separate podcast. But as far as the Ducks are concerned, Um, They just had too many undisciplined penalties, a lot of bad penalties, might I add. Um, Seattle had their way with the Ducks as far as special teams. I'm honestly surprised that it wasn't maybe four or five power play goals. The only silver lining was in the third period where the Ducks got two shorthanded goals on the same penalty. Yeah, that doesn't happen very often does it that was the only saving grace but aside from that the ducks allowed three power play goals against the kraken one against the oilers because of course and another couple against vancouver because of course one of those might i add was a highlight reel just sick disgusting goal that i will talk about in a little bit but that's six power play goals in the last three games now The reason I'm making a bigger deal about this is because the Ducks shouldn't be taking these kind of penalties to begin with. The Ducks right now are the second worst team as far as PK percentage with a miserable 72.9%. The only team worse than them on the PK is the New York Islanders who are somehow, you know, fighting for a playoff spot. I don't, I still don't know how the Islanders are doing it. I mean, their power play is better than the Ducks, so they have a pretty decent power play. Um, They're good on on five-on-five. They don't allow that many five-on-five goals in general, so maybe that's the Islanders' success, I guess. But for the Ducks, I mean, they're just giving up power play goals left and right, especially with that PP percentage. Um, It's bad. When it's the second worst, that's when you know that it is really bad. Let's look at... Goals allowed. They have allowed a whopping 83 power play goals this season in 75 games. They're allowing over a power play goal per game. The next highest team is way down there. The Minnesota Wild with 60. 6-0. And there's a bunch of teams in the 40s, a bunch in the 50s. So you have like this large like glob of teams and then you have the ducks which are way up there with 83 that just cannot happen they also cannot commit too many of these dumb penalties which the ducks do by the way how bad is it i'm glad you asked 
The Ducks also lead the league in penalties taken with 411. 411 penalties taken. They lead the league in minor penalties with a whopping 351 in 75 games. Now, I'm a mathematician. That averages out to about 4.6 to 4.7 minor penalties per game. That's minor penalties, folks. No team comes close. None. This is a discipline problem. This is a problem that goes on several factors here. This goes partially on the players. This goes partially on the coaches. This is not just one singular act. This is not, you cannot pin this on one singular person or one singular part of the team. This is everybody. This is on the assistant coaches. Why do I say assistant coaches? Because Newell Brown um, kind of leads the special teams and has not done a good job on that on the penalty kill. Part of that has to do with injuries. Part of that has to do with the personnel. But the Ducks personnel has been back the last three games. Injuries are finally subsiding. We're finally seeing everybody back in healthy. We've seen Minchikov. We've seen Zellweger. We've seen Carlson. Zegris is back. So what's where does the excuse go there? Does it go on the players? It, it should partially go on the players a little bit. They've got to be held a little bit more accountable for their actions. And I get, I kind of get benching Trevor Zegris, but I kind of don't as well. And I'll talk about Zegris again, on a separate podcast, because that deserves its own podcast, like on its own. That's why I'm not bringing it up right now. But Zegers getting benched before, that's not helping matters. So then this falls on the players, and then this falls on on the coach. Greg Cronin, trying to change the culture and trying to change this team, and he has not helped this Ducks team as far as discipline. And, you know, it has to start on the, at the top. It has to start with your head coach. And Greg Cronin, maybe too late this season with only seven games left, but next season, I think Greg Cronin's got to take, like, a hard look and he's got to change some things. He's got to realize that what he did this season simply did not work. This is also on the players not, you know, completely going in line with his new systems. So again, not just one thing, like this has got to be an improvement from the players, from the coaches, um, assistant coaches, they've got to go. They've absolutely got to go. And I hear the comments. I see the comments, you know, a lot of you saying Newell Brown's got to go. And you know what? I mean, I'm going to tend to agree with that. When your special teams are that bad and are causing you to legitimately lose games night in and night out, then yeah, that's where a lot of the blame should absolutely go. Sorry to say that, but it should go there. So that's kind of my my thoughts on that. Oh, and by the way, as far as goals allowed, I mentioned that the goals have allowed 83 power play goals. At least they haven't allowed the most goals on even strength. So there's that. That honor would go to the San Jose Sharks. Oh, yeah, and also the Chicago Blackhawks, they're right there, too, as far as even strength goals allowed. So at least the Ducks aren't worst at something. Oh, and Columbus. How could I forget about Columbus? They've allowed a slew of even strength goals this season. So, hey, you know what? At least even strength, the Ducks are better than three teams, I guess. I'll I'll just go with that. All right, we're going to head to the first intermission and talk about the last few games and also talk about goals for a hot minute. We will get to that on the other side. Now a brief word from FanDuel. And you know what? We are in March Madness, and FanDuel has, you know, everything you need as far as futures and whatnot. And also, I should point out that there's a lot of action. There's baseball, basketball, there's hockey. Basketball and hockey going into the playoffs. And you have March Madness, or rather, the it's no longer March, but it's the NCAA championships for both men's and women's basketball. And right now, 
new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook and the official online sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And please, folks, gamble responsibly. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, you're locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez. Let's talk about the last few games, shall we? Must we? Yes, we must. Let's talk first about that game against Seattle. Actually, first, I'm going to talk briefly about the San Diego goals. Why am I talking about the goals on this particular podcast? Because I never got around to a goals Thursday last week. Uh, we had a double header on Thursday for, you know, squad cast with Locked on Kraken. And we were supposed to have an episode on Friday. Um, that's when stuff started to happen. So I'll just leave it at that. I'll just say, just for the sake of just saying it once and then that's it. Family comes first. I'll leave it at that. All right. AHL. The goals have had kind of a hard time with it. They had one perfect game followed by a bunch of games that just did not go well. So for San Diego, they are on the brink of elimination. Their elimination number is down to one. They need to win out and hope that a couple of teams will help them out. That's looking unlikely. But hey, you know what? They had a perfect game at least last weekend. So that was that was kind of fun. It was a perfect game at Tucson. A team that is going to the playoffs, a team that is very good, and then they followed up the previous night by giving them a touchdown. So yeah, as far as that perfect game is concerned, back check was working, the passes were working, special teams like every single aspect of their game was working flawlessly. And I was kind of saying to myself, gee, why couldn't they do this all season long? I mean, especially with guys getting called up to the Ducks, you know, especially without Zellweger. You know, how does that happen? It's teamwork. And it is also going into, like, the system, part partially. And also Chase DeLeo, who's had himself a great season and now the franchise leader in points. So congrats to Chase DeLeo. All right, back to the Ducks game against the Seattle Kraken. Um, 10 penalties. You cannot give up that many power plays to the, to the Kraken, who are a pretty solid team on special teams. Like, they're not the greatest at special teams, but they're pretty good. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think the Kraken could be a little bit better in some aspects of their game. I do think Seattle's penalty killing could be a little bit better also. But as far as um, power play, power play is not bad. And honestly, Seattle is like, um, they're in the middle of the pack, but they got a pretty solid power play. You know, 21 plus percent. It's pretty good. It's above average. It's above league average. And you just cannot do that. Seattle got not one, not two, but three power play goals. This was as bad as it gets as far as special teams. And this was also a two-game set where we saw the debuts, where the debut of Logan Morrison, you saw a bunch of Firebirds getting called up. Seattle's doing everything they can to spice up their roster. And that's exactly what happened. And now the Kraken are on their own little winning streak albeit against bad teams, but Seattle just looked like the better team in general. And especially when they're given that many chances, they're going to score on them. Seattle's got, you know, some pretty good, like, shots on their team. They do. And also, Logan Morrison on that second power play unit, that really, you know, sped them up. Their power play looked way better than I had seen in the previous month. So, an like a combination of all that coming together, that spelled disaster for the Ducks, and that's exactly what happened. Then we go into the weekend games. I almost don't want to talk a whole lot about the Oilers game, so I'm not, but the Ducks just got outworked on this one in every aspect. They got outshot 37 to 22. They got out hustled, outplayed. Was there very many positives on this game? 
Well, Alice Kalorn got a power play goal very late in the game after they had already spotted six goals to the Oilers. Was there a little bit of pain when I saw that Adam Henry got the opening goal? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit of pain there. And this is something that Rico has done all season long, is getting those opportunities thanks to some good passing. And Henrik's got a solid shot. I mean, as I've said, he would be a good death piece for any team. Watch out for the Oilers. And then, of course, Connor McDavid doing Connor McDavid things and scoring on the power play because, of course, he's going to score on the power play. And also Sam Carrick getting in on the action, got the primary apple on the Matthias Ekholm goal. And I said, nope, I don't know how much more I want to watch. I ended up watching the rest because I'm a masochist. And if I could take away any positives from that particular game is that the rookies in some parts of the game looked better. And if I can really go micro here, I like the progression just in general, like not from this game totally, but I'm liking the progression of Leo Carlson. Um, And this is mostly just in the last few games in general. Um, Leo has been making some mistakes as well as Minty Kov and Zells. And I like seeing Minty and Zells out there on the ice together. Um, But they are starting to make better plays. They're starting to make smarter plays. They're slowly starting to get it, especially against an elite team like the Oilers, but not as elite as, as the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks are one of the best teams in the National Hockey League, and the Ducks played them well. That's the game I want to talk about for more than one and a half minutes, the Vancouver Canucks game. That one, I thought the Ducks, they they had a chance to win this game. They were in it all the way through. The highlight real goal that a lot of people talked about that night was the Joshua goal. And I'll admit that that was a sick goal. Let me paint a picture for you. The Ducks, again, went on the, on the penalty kill. It's a theme, isn't it? And there you had Dakota Joshua put the puck between his legs and just flick it right past, right over the shoulder of Lukas Dosa. Poor Dosti. Um, He did everything he could on this game. I think Dostal was left out to dry, especially in the very end, which frustrated me to no end. But I think the game against the Canucks had the most positives because A, it's the Canucks. Two, or sorry, A, it was the Canucks. B, it was close. And C, Dostal had a largely solid game for the most part. And finally... Uh, We finally saw the first goal for a young rookie. That is right, Olin Zellweger, his first in the NHL on a bad angle shot. Those are the kind of shots he's been making all season long with San Diego. And I know I said AHL, I meant NHL, but, you know, I'm I'm tired. (laughs) But Olin Zellweger with his first National Hockey League goal. So congrats to Zells on his first NHL goal on not like a super bad angle, but not a great angle either. Um, right at the bottom of the faceoff dot and found just a small amount of daylight. There was maybe, if I could paint a picture, maybe an inch above his shoulder and an inch to the right of his mask. That was all he had was like that small amount of daylight when the goalie raised his shoulder and Zells just picked the corner. Got it. Passed him perfectly. And that's that was a spark plug for the Ducks scoring two goals just in a minute. Because Zell scored, then McTavish scored. All of a sudden, we got a 2-2 game. And it look, it did look like this game was going to go to overtime. When we hit the last TV timeout, I was preparing for overtime. I thought, okay, who's going to crack first? Is it going to be Artur Silovs? Or is it going to be Lukas Dostal? Which, by the way, was a matchup that we saw last season between the Abbotsford Canucks and the San Diego Goals. How did those go? Not so good for Lukas Dostal. Better for Silovs. And in this one, 
this just adds to the list that I that I made before, by the way. Uh, for those of you everydayers, you might recall that I made a list of instances where the Ducks blew a lead in the last few minutes of a hockey game. And they haven't done that a whole lot this season, but this was peak Dallas Eakins era Ducks where they played to protect the puck and they played just to go into overtime. They took their foot completely off the gas. And what do you think happened? What you thought would happen. Dakota Joshua scored with a couple minutes left on a play like where they crashed the net. And that one I put on Fowler. That one I put on Zellweger. Um, both those guys missed their assignment. Fowler going over. Zell's not reading the assignment like right away. He was beat by a half second. So that's on both of them. It's not going to be on any one player, but I put that on both of them. And that was the game winning goal. That 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 one is a shame that the Ducks couldn't get a point out of it because I thought they would. So final score three to two in favor of the Canucks, and the losing streak continues. All right, we're going to head into the second intermission and talk very briefly about a couple of upcoming games. We'll get to that on the other side. Now a brief word from Sleeper. And we're almost at the end of the regular season, but you know what? You can win big with daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. Just pick what players you would take this week to win 100 times your money. You could pick guys like McKinnon or Ovechkin, who's been on a heater recently, or Crosby, if they'll record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, plus, minus, etc. To win 100 times bet on sleeper, sleeper, correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Ducks fans. Use promo code Locked on NHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's lock, That's code Locked on NHL. See sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Mm. Welcome back to Locked on Anaheim Ducks. Okay, there are seven games left. The Ducks are missing the playoffs again. They have at least clinched something. If you if you want to look on the bright side of something, which I'm going to try to do for the next minute, like I'm trying here, the Ducks currently have 52 points. Seven games left. The most points they can get is 14, which means they have clinched at least the fourth worst record in the National Hockey League, which means they have clinched at least a top six pick. And by the way, with these games left, they're not going to catch the Columbus Blue Jackets at 62 points. They're just not going to win five of their last seven games. So it's really down to the bottom three teams. San Jose, all the way at the bottom at 42. They're not going to win more than four games. They got a tough schedule coming up. So we look at the Blackhawks. The Blackhawks have some tough games. They're at 49 points and the Ducks are at 52. I'm not going to say the T word, but the Blackhawks have a couple of games in there that are winnable. The Ducks have the Flames tonight, later tonight. Then they're at home against the Seattle Kraken. Then at home against the St. Louis Blues, the LA Kings, and then the Calgary Flames again before they finish on the road. They have a game on Saturday the 13th at Staples Center. And then they're off for a week inexplicably. Like they're off for a few days until their final game on the road. Do we even want to see that game against the Vegas Golden Knights April 18th? That's a kind of weird part of the schedule where the Ducks have no games and they're just kind of sitting around waiting for one more game. And I don't even think a lot of the Ducks players are going to, like, just from past seasons, I could see that game being an absolute bloodbath. Like, how are you going to feel going into those last practices? At least next week, there's a bunch of games, and it's just, you know, go, 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 game, 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 game. You know, at least there you have – a pretty consistent schedule. And then you just have all those time, those days off. 
and everyone's just waiting for the season to end. One more game. What's that going to accomplish? I guess just sit around and watch the Blackhawks play one more, and then that's it. Now, you know what? You may as well bring the rest of the guys down to San Diego. Bring the young guys down to the goals. Let them play the three or four games they have left in the season and just leave that last game as a wash. Play the vets the last game. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. All right. We're going to wrap up here, and we'll have another show after the Flames game, and then we'll have a couple more shows later on in the week. We'll at least try to have one from Akershire Arena this week, so be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Don't forget this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. You can follow me on X at StimpyJD. Shows X is at LO underscore Ducks. And just thanks for your continued support. It is so appreciated. And we'll be back later talking about the Ducks Flames game at Calgary. It's probably not going to go well. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, thanks so much for Locked on Anaheim Ducks. I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the evening. Please remember to be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And Ducks. Fly together.